Now that we've learned a little bit about food webs and about how energy moves through the environment, let's go ahead and focus on just one and break it down a little bit. So I live here in Phoenix, Arizona, which is part of the Sonoran Desert. And most people, when they think of a desert, they picture sand and tumbleweeds and no plants or animals as far as the eye can see. But the Sonoran Desert's a little bit different because we actually get a decent amount of rain here. And because of that, we have hundreds of species of plants and animals that live in the Sonoran Desert. But it is still a desert, so things are pretty extreme here. In the summer, it can get up to 115 degrees. And that can be really hard for some animals and plants to live in. But then in the winter, it can get really, really cold at nighttime. And some animals and plants also st uh, struggle to stay alive in the winter. Because of how different all the seasons are, plants and animals have had to adapt and evolve different behaviors uh, to be able to stay alive during those times. So that can be kind of tricky for predators because your food's not available to you all year long. In the winter, most of the amphibians and reptiles are gonna be brumating or hibernating underneath the sand. In the spring and the fall, you might have a lot of birds traveling through the area, which can be a yummy snack for some predators, but they only are here during their migration, so they're not always available. And sometimes our plants bloom once a year, and sometimes they bloom twice a year. So it really just depends, but because of all these different changes, Species need to be adaptable. They need to be able to eat a lot of different types of food. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the Sonoran Desert food web. Mesquite trees produce seed pods in the spring and summer, and forever they've been a really important food source for people in the Sonoran Desert, but they're also a really important food source for the wildlife here. Mesquite trees are primary producers. Kangaroo rats are a very common and a very cute rodent found throughout the Sonoran Desert and they are a very big fan of mesquite pods. They will even take them back to their burrows and store them up for the seasons where there are no seed pods. There are also many predators in the desert that like to eat the kangaroo rats like rattlesnakes and coyotes. These guys are secondary consumers. Those coyotes can also eat the rattlesnakes making them a tertiary consumer as well. And just to make it a little bit more complicated, coyotes will also eat the mesquite pods when their carnivore diet isn't available. So that also makes them a primary consumer. Gamble's quail are another animal that like to eat the mesquite pods, so they're a primary consumer. Just like the kangaroo rats, those quail are a tasty treat for rattlesnakes and coyotes. And there are even more predators here. There are hawks and bobcats on the hunt as well. So hawks will eat the quail and the kangaroo rats, which makes them a secondary consumer. But those hawks will also eat the rattlesnakes, which eats the kangaroo rats, making the hawks a tertiary consumer as well. And the bobcats in the area like to eat the quail and the kangaroo rats and the snakes, just like the hawk. So that makes them a secondary and tertiary consumer as well. I know that was a lot of species to cover in the Sonoran Desert food web, but it's actually just a teeny tiny little portion of the entire food web. If we were to try to do the entire food web, it would be hundreds of species of plants and animals. It would be nearly impossible to write it all down. So I hope you guys understand the food web a little bit more now that you've seen it in action. If you want, you can check out our oceanic food web, which we are also going to be breaking down. But thank you guys so much for joining us today. Have an awesome rest of your day.